Welcome to this month's Costex Coffee Break webinar. My name is Matthew Donison and I'm a product specialist at Exactal. This month we're going to be commencing a new series based on industry trades like M&E, flooring, carpentry and so on. Uh, but our first video is going to cover roofing, uh, specifically measuring pitched roofs off of a flat plan. Now we've got a brief overview here of the different uh, Costex versions that we offer and the features contained within each of them. If you aren't aware, Costex is a fully integrated estimating solution. Uh, it supports everything from hand-drawn sketches to PDFs, 2D, 3D CAD drawings, and also BIM files. Um, so if you need more information on what those different products are and what those features are and the various pros and cons of each, then please get in touch with your local office and they can explain that to you. Costex offers quick and easy on-screen takeoff and measurement that can be live linked into our comprehensive workbooks to save you time and eliminate errors. The platform also offers a professional report writer, an auto revisioning tool to help with new drawing versions and much more. As you can see on the next slide, there's a huge variety of file types supported by Costex to help with compatibility as we want your import and export processes to be as smooth as possible. Our previous webinar covered the use of variables within Costex dimension groups. For those of you who don't know, variables act as simple placeholders for chosen values and can be dynamically assigned by the user. If you want to view that webinar, you can visit www.exactor.com forward slash webinars, or you can go to Exactor's YouTube page as well. What I'm going to do is now switch over to Costex and I'm going to take you through the process of First of all, using layers to isolate components that you want to measure. I'm then going to create a dimension group for the measurements and show you how we can use the expression editor to create uh, formulas that will determine a pitched area from a flat plan. And then finally, I'll take that into the workbook side and I'll show you how you can live link your values. I'm going to start off by showing you how you can easily use layers to isolate the components you want to work with. In this case, of course, we're going to isolate the roof and work with that. So if I go to my layers view here, we can see all of the, the layers that exist within the file. Now, rather than having to turn every single one off apart from the roof, the fastest way to do it is to actually um, hover over the component that you want to use. You can hold down the shift key if you want, and that will clarify whatever else is contained on that layer. If I then click that, it disappears. And if I then press the invert button on the ribbon up here, you'll see that the layers are inverted and we've then got a nice clean view of just the roof. If I then save that, I can call it something like the roof and that will be available for me and everyone else working on this building. So at any time, if I show all layers again, I can go back to that saved views by going to views here and then clicking on roof. I'm now going to create the dimension group that we're going to use for measuring this pitched roof. And I'll do that by going to my dimensions ribbon at the top and then pressing the add button. I'm just going to pause the video, fill out the details, and I'll then talk you through the detail itself. And here we go. I filled out the information. What I've got is the name. Now, it's quite crucial um, with the way I'm using this example to actually have the the degrees of the pitch in, in front there, and I'll come on to why in a second. So I've got 30 degree pitch. In terms of the folder, I've got it in roofing backslash pitched. Now that will give me subfolders, so I can keep my measures organized if I want to. So I could have uh, roofing then pitched and roofing and then flat, for example. I'm using uh, an area measure in this case. And down the bottom, I've then put in a custom field for pitched area with a unit of measure of meters squared. If I go over to my measured dimensions tab now, you can see down the bottom here, what I've got is a formula in there. If I click on this ellipsis button, it opens up and, and shows me how I've constructed that. So I've got the area field um, and that's being divided by this formula. So what we're doing is we're using the X number formula to look inside the dimension group name. Now, I can't see it from behind here, unfortunately, at the moment, but what the dimension group name had was the 30 degree pitch. So what the X number formula does is it takes the 
30 in this case because we're retrieving the first value from the dimension group name. We're then converting it into radians and then we're using trigonometry, finding the cosine uh, to then calculate the pitched area. So you can use a formula like this um, or you can use this formula uh, to build up your own custom um, quantities when you're using these fields at the bottom here. So if I just close that down and then just press insert, you'll see that that group has then appeared in my folder structure that I told it to. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to say that this entire roof is 30 degree pitched. So what I'm going to do is quickly measure this. So I'm just going to click around the outside of the shape. Remember, you only have to click once in each change of direction. And then in a second, I can press the Enter key. You'll see that straight away, I've got an area. Now that area, 408 meters squared, is the flat area. So ignoring any pitches. Um, but if I hover over that shape, you can see it gives me all of the different dimension attributes. In this case, it's relatively straightforward. We've not got many. So I've got in there um, the, the length, which is the perimeter. So in this case, I could use it for um, soffits, fascias, guttering perhaps as well. Um, I've got the area on plan, which you know, in this context isn't perhaps that useful, but I have the pitched area. So I've got 471 meters squared of pitched roofing. Now you can change this instead of just having 408 meters squared, which is the flat area. If we want, I can open this up and we can say default display should be pitched area. So if I then update that, you can see that then changes straight away to 471 meters squared, which is of course my pitched area. You'll see that the symbol also changes. So we have a question mark with number one next to it. So it's just telling us that that isn't the flat area. That is in fact the pitch. I can then go over to my workbook. I can then insert that in by dragging and dropping. I can amend the description if I need to. I can use the pitched area by default, but of course I could switch in and grab one of the other sections. So let's, let's take this. So let's change this name to say pitched roofing. Uh, I'm going to use the pitched area. I'm going to put a rate against it. So I'm going to say, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to say it's 100 per meter squared. If I then press update, you'll see it then calculates that line item. So that's the pitched roofing. What I can also do if I drag and drop another line in, I could go in and say I wanted to use the length, which was, of course, the perimeter. Now, this is going to be for my guttering, as an example. So I'll put in guttering there and then I can put in a rate if I said for simplicity's sake again, say 20 per meter, I can do that and you'll then see it then inserts that line item. I've got two different values here, but of course they're linked to the same measure. And if you do want to go back at any time and see where does that come from, you can press the show source. It takes you back to the drawing and highlights that for you. Thanks for watching that. If you do have any questions, then please get in touch uh, with support at exactor.com or you can reach out to your local office and they can talk you through any questions that you have. Thank you.